Customer Service Employee is sponsored by Eufloria, a medical dispensary opening at the beginning of July 2019 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, off of 11th and I-44. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but once a month, we do a stand-up comedy show here. Heirloom not only lets us do this, they pay us money to do this. Uh, first off, seriously, thank you so much for coming out and doing this. Being the, uh, the first non-musician that we've had on the show. Uh, what is your name? Evan Heath. Okay, Evan, and uh, where do you work? I, I work within comedy, and also I work at the airport for this land press. What, what do you do for this? It's just a kiosk. Oh. I just sit up there during the day. Nice. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, what made you want to pursue comedy? Man, I fell into it in a really weird way. Um, it's kind of a, lo a long story. Go, I will, I will okay. cut it down. You're good. Okay, so cool. Um, and this is what I look like, and this is my outfit. How are my legs doing? Wow. My legs got a better reaction than the volume. This morning, is there was a flying cockroach in my bathroom. Then I was like, I am definitely doing a comedy show tonight. It was so big that the bug like looked at me. I don't think a bug should be able to look at you. I like my bugs really one dimensional. Like, my people. <laughs> uh, basically, I got really depressed, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't have a lot of friends, and I just um, went started going against my previous approach to life, which was just to, to go home and be miserable and cry myself to sleep. Mm -hmm. I decided to start trying to connect with, you know, wherever, whoever, you know, just kind of like, you know, just try to like, put myself out there more. Um, I met this girl and named Jamie, Jamie Nafee, and her sister Sheila Nafee is uh, doing comedy. And she told me she wanted to try it out like her sister was doing. And I didn't even know we had a local comedy scene. She hit me up and asked me if I wanted to watch her sister at the Looney Bin. Um, I'd never been there and I went and it was like a contest. And um, it was kind of, a, if I remember right, it was sort of a, a tough show. I mean, it had like laughs, but you know, it was a... It was a local show. It wasn't the kind of show where it would make you want to do comedy after you saw it. Like, I could do that. Like, you're like, I don't know if I'm going up there. <laughs> I saw this article about how if you live in Florida, it's not a good idea to get a pet door because gators can literally just go through it and get into your house. I'm like, big deal. In Oklahoma, your family can come over. <laughs> I was driving around listening to this band called Megadeth. Any Megadeth fans? Nope. And the singer came on and he goes, You know why you're here. But I wasn't actually at the show, I was just like in my car. So it just became like an existential question for me. I don't know. Roy. Roy Johnson, that teaches the comedy class there, mm -hmm. uh, came up to her, Jamie, uh, in the lobby afterwards, and I was with her, and because he knew that was uh, Sheila's sister, and he knew Sheila, mm -hmm. and he was like, hey, you want to take my class? My com when are you going to take my comedy class, like your sister did? And she, she kind of gave him like an excuse about why she couldn't do it, and then when he walked off, I was like, I thought you wanted to try this out, you know, like this, that's... What I just heard from you is different than what you told me. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of threw out there, like, what if I did it with you? Or, like, what if I did it? And she was like, you would? You know, it's that kind of thing that I put zero thought into it. <laughs> I, before that before that came out of my mouth, I had never thought about doing comedy myself. And when it really came around, the comedy class came around, I, I showed up with nothing. You know, I didn't show up with, like, a pad of jokes or a pen or nothing. I just showed up. The class, though, was really something that I hadn't thought about. Um, I didn't even realize that there was a show 
that you do in the loony bin, like, to culminate the class. Like, I didn't know I was ever going to have to perform. I thought I was just taking a class oh. about stand-up. But yeah, during the first day, he was like, you guys really, really need to listen to me. Take notes, you know, pay attention, because at the end of this, we're going to do a show here that usually sells out. And I had, I looked around, and I was like, geez, sells out. Like, over 200 people would see me do a set that I put zero thought into this moment in time. I was like, fuck, I, I literally looked around until I saw the exit, and then I looked over at her, and I, I wondered how she would take it. <laughs> if like, I bailed. Yeah. Because she's there because of my <coughs> encouraging, and I'm, and I'm thinking that moment, I'm like, I gotta bail. So, relationships? Anybody want me to talk about that for a little bit? <laughs> the one thing about relationships is that I found it's not enough to just have similar interests. To have a successful one, you've also got to have similar problems to really make it work. And I met this girl, and the problem that she was having was she was trying to get a swimming pool put in. But it had been raining a lot, and the ground was wet, and she had to wait for it to dry out before they could put the pool in. And I'm never going to have a problem like that. But I wanted to relate to her in my own way, so I shared with her a problem that I'd been having recently. So I've had a bologna sandwich for dinner every night this week. And she walked away from me a little bit. I tried to explain to her. I was like, it's not always that bad. See, I would normally have hamburger helper. It's just that my mom has been out of town on a business trip. <laughs> And I don't know how to make it. I have the hamburger, I just thought I'm a helper. I was actually in real life hit by a train. Fuck me. <laughs> what? No, you don't skate past that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? A real thing. Like, yeah, a lot of people don't know that, but the uh, the train, the, the bar was up, you know, with the flashing lights. Uh, but the lights were flashing. And I kind of remember being so just like elsewhere in my head that I was just like, following cars through it and it was like the cars in front of me probably saw the train and were like oh we can beat it but with me i was just like kind of mindlessly drive behind them like i remember like the back of my mind being like oh a train that's going to add more minutes potentially but i'm just kind of still driving i hadn't really like the thoughts hadn't connected when i when i woke up there was like multiple multiple ambulances there multiple cop cop cars and he was like a huge scene um, the train conductor woke me up, and um, I was just like, holy shit, but my adrenaline was so sky high that I didn't actually feel any pain, even though I ended up with two black eyes, you know, I felt really fucked up, like, eventually, once it wore off, like, the next, and maybe it was some point the next day, I think, when I started really feeling it. Back to the comedy thing, I show up for the next class, and I'm like, there are, I had shades on, and when I took them off, I had, like, the fucking black eyes. They were like, what the hell happened to you? And I was like, man, I got hit by a train. And I was like, man, I don't want to talk about it. Because I had talked about it so much. <laughs> I was so sick of telling the story. And, you know, Roy, classic Roy Johnson, if you've met him, he was like, like, dude, you've been fucking hit by a train. Like, you have to talk. He's like, this is what your set needs to be about. So my first joke I ever told on stage was a joke about getting hit by a train. I just didn't, I never thought that I was going to keep doing comedy. So I was like, how much of my time do I want to put into like building a set I'm only going to do once that's probably going to suck anyway that I didn't really want to do? So I was just like completely half-assing the class and not working on it. But then when it was like, you know, it's like 11 weeks and we're on like week 10 and the show's like, you know, in a fucking week and I'm still like, so I'm hit by a train and then I realize, you know, it was so ridiculously bad that it's almost funny thinking about it but it wasn't funny because it's like jesus christ this is this guy's set you yeah. know like you know so i think it started kind of getting to him like i need to like do something with him you know whatever it takes and he ended up getting on stage with me and ripping my phone out of my hand and just being like come on dude tell tell the fucking joke man you know like he really got actually like in my face mm. and i kind of looked out into the crowd after he did that and, and kind of a like which one of you is going to stand up for me or like who's going to be like don't yeah. Come on, let him, you know, or whatever, like, stand up for me, you know, a little bit. And it was just like a dead sign. People were just looking at me like, yeah, dude, like, where is it? You know, like, where, where's the joke? Like, you should be better. Like, he's right to do this with you, you know, because you've just been bullshitting every week. Fuck, this guy's yelling at me. I'm like, I'm stressed. I'm like, fuck everything. I'm like, all right, here's the fucking joke. Blah, blah, blah. And I actually, like, put some fire in it. 
And then people started actually laughing a little bit. You know, it was like a literal like light bulb went off in my head. I was like, oh, this is what it is. And then right when I got off stage, I remember Sheila was like, man, I didn't think you could be that. But I was like, that was like, it was pretty good, you know? And it was like, just giving me that little bit of like, it was just like, oh, this is what it is. Got any wrestling fans in here? <laughs> Keep asking people about yes. stuff that's clearly not their interests. <laughs> I went to this wrestling show and I sat next to this guy who was probably like the best heckler ever in Tulsa. And during one of the first matches, he yelled out at the wrestlers and he goes, Beat him to death! <laughs> <laughs> kind of freaked me out. I was like, should I leave? And I realized, I was like, oh, he knows it's fake. He just wants it to be real. It's kind of like my dating life. I want it to be real, but I usually just go home and put in a porno. And then I beat it to death. Yeah. <laughs> I think you guys are about warmed up for this show. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking that out. Uh, what is the cutest death you can imagine? Man, what if like a bunch of bunnies just like mauled someone? <laughs> <laughs> no body hair, eyebrows, head, everything. No body hair or all the body hair, like be a werewolf person. There's... I'm 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 like body hair everywhere. Like I have so much. So a werewolf person wouldn't be too far off. So that's just the one you go to pick. Yeah, that's who I am. So. <laughs> if you could have, if you could own one exotic pet, what would it be? Oh my god, what, like a tiger or something? Yeah, just a cool. A tiger? Sure. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd, uh, penguin. Penguin's fine. Oh, that'd be, that'd be really tight. You can keep him on a leash. He'd probably be <laughs> fucking miserable, but, like, I'd... how much time do you set aside to like everybody's Facebook statuses? So, um, my job, in my, my life, I didn't build my life to lend itself to that power. <laughs> but it just kind of does. So I work at a kiosk, as we covered earlier, mm -hmm. and I can I just hang out there for long periods of time, long stretches where people don't even come up. Where I'm just like I can just be on my phone for like hours. But I just I just try to support people because I feel like you know a lot of people just look at stuff and they're like oh that's cool and they just go buy it. Mm -hmm. But it's like why not like you know do some you know try to like pump up your friend a little because some people really need that in like a non-condescending way it's like there are people that legitimately put something out there because they're like they 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 want some encouragement you know mm -hmm. or they want some love and i try to give that to people because i'm like that could be really important it is it is really important for some people so i just try to be uh try to be good in that and uh one more thing uh because it's something that i'd like to see i want you and joey duffy to get together and have a nice off <laughs> I was just, I, we took a break for a second and I looked at my phone immediately. First thing it showed me was a post from him. So I always, <laughs> always look at his stuff and he's, he's got a new car. He posted mm -hmm. himself in his new car and I think we got the same car now. I think it's the same car I have, same color, everything. Maybe you're the it same person. It looked like a black Ford Focus. I could be wrong, but I think that's awesome that we could both have the same car. I was about, you might be the same person or maybe, have you seen twins? The, yeah. Like, it could be twins. I'm pretty, yeah, I think I would be. DeVito. No, I don't think you'd be DeVito. You got Schwarzenegger I, all over you. 